Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday's live stream. Man, things are just running together. So uh, just like the title and the thumbnail suggests, it looks like Germany in one day has become the third largest country to own Bitcoin. And it really comes down to legal precedent and matter and, of course, seizure. So let's just jump right into everything we got to talk about tonight and go from there. So before we get into that, just so everybody knows, uh, right after this live stream, I'll be doing a live stream on my second channel, Dan Degen. And if you have never been to that channel, it's uh, essentially the place where you can either make a ton of money or lose everything. It's usually nowhere in between. And these are like the more risky plays. And of course, we talk about these things. And of course, it's like uh, you know, very, very risky stuff. But tonight's going to not be risky because I'm going to give away roughly $1,000 worth of this Solana meme coin called uh, Myro. And I'll tell you why I'm doing it. And we'll go over all that stuff if you really want to during the Q&A. But let's just jump into this stuff, which is German police seize $2.1 billion worth of Bitcoin in piracy sting. And when I saw this, I'm like, hey, I thought that uh, Bitcoin was unconfiscatable. But apparently, one of the suspects voluntarily transferred the Bitcoin to the federal crime police. I don't know if it was voluntarily. I don't know who does that. But apparently somebody did. So here's what's happening. Police in Germany have provisionally seized 50,000 Bitcoin. Let me say that again. 50,000 Bitcoin worth $2.17 billion. The action is, is it's the largest crypto seizure ever. Claim is related to the operation of a piracy website in 2013 that violated the Copyright Act. Proceeds of that venture were then converted to Bitcoin. And I got to tell you, there's actually a good lesson here uh, for not, not about piracy, but about you know being in the in the market for quite some time can have huge reverberations and and, and repercussions and uh, actual fantastic gains because these guys have been in the, essentially they've been in this, this market since 2013. Now it was illegal and illicit activity, which is what J.P. Morgan always talks about, or Jamie Dimon, excuse me. But it is a point to be made that these guys essentially were the original diamond hands. So a final decision, as everybody knows, has not yet been made about the utilization of the Bitcoins. This is from the German police. But I will say this. When I was taking a look at this, there's a great website. It's called bitcoinworldwide.com forward slash treasuries. Links in the description. And if you take a look at this, this site itself, you can see just the total amount of Bitcoin, the value of today. And it's updated every day. Today is January 30, 2024. So you're looking at the value right here is 88 billion, which is pretty good. Now we're Bitcoin, 2 million. And we've got ETFs, countries, public companies, blah, blah, blah. But see this countries, if you click on this, you can go down here and see just the number of Bitcoin that are available. USA, of course, we like to seize property like crazy. We have four, or excuse me, 207,189 Bitcoin just laying around. Now there's going to be a sell off in the next, I believe it's 12 days. Uh, but we'll see how that works out. It's like 130 million, which is a drop of the bucket. Not a big deal. China, from what they report, <laughs> has 194,000. And in number three spot so far is Ukraine with 46,351. Now, again, this was 50,000 Bitcoin. So in one day, Germany jump leapfrogs El Salvador, Finland, Georgia, and Ukraine to become the number three spot. So again, congratulations to Germany. Looks like you got a windfall coming. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And also, I don't know if this would affect you. Uh, some of you with this might. But uh, if you're a whale, just know that Coinbase is going to charge you a conversion fee above $75 million for monthly volume. I threw this in because we can all dream, right? Here's what's happening. The USD coin to US dollars. If you do this, you do have a conversion exceeding $75 million in 30 days. They're going to charge you. I think it's like, here we go. Uh, 0.1%. And if it's more than 150 million to 500 million, it's going to be 0.15%. Customers will pay 0.1 for a monthly volume between 75 and 150. And of course, 0.15. I just thought it was interesting that uh, they put this out as if this actually pertains to anybody. But if this ever does happen to me, God, that'd be a great day. I will gladly pay the 0.10% fee as I go along kerchunking and selling Bitcoin and buying Bitcoin. <laughs> between 75 and 150 million. Anyhow, good stuff to know. And that's on the Bitcoin side. Now let's change it up a bit and just talk about free airdrops. Uh, this was an interesting story 
uh, on Solana. Now I was on, uh, I got the chance to go back to my own stopping grounds with, uh, with James over at DCA Live. It was me, James from Invest Answers and uh, CTO Larson. And we were actually talking about this yesterday, was it yesterday, geez, yesterday. And then uh, today, this uh, I just wanted to just talk about how easy this was. And this was, uh, if you don't know, if you were using uh, the Jupyter uh, Dex, which is, in my personal opinion, one of the easiest to use. It's it's almost flawless. It's very easy. It's simple, and uh, it's super cheap. I know some people will say, "Well, Rob, what about MimSwap?" Or what about Uniswap? Or what about Trader Joe? Or what about whatever? And uh, they're all fine. They're all fine. You know, it's just I don't really have. Uh, I'm not, you know, chain dominant. I just found Jupiter to be extremely easy and cheap and fast, and it just worked. And one of the things they gave me was 100 bucks for doing absolutely nothing. I thought that was pretty interesting, and it was the easiest thing I ever had to do. So um, this is just a lesson. Again, everything's a lesson in life. And when I got this, I was like, yeah, it was like worth like 70 bucks. And I went up to like a hundred bucks and I posted this. And we take a look over the last seven days. It's, I mean, it looks pretty good. Uh, and then of course we peaked out yesterday at whatever this price is, 0. 0.00001. And it's, you know, over 24 hours has progressively just took a big dump show. And that's not it. This is it. And I got this, this tweet because I, when I posted this over here, I said, you know, hey, this is pretty cool. I'm the easiest hundred bucks I ever made. And then uh, as I, people were talking about it, uh, Angus McBraith asked me a question. Did you sell then? Did you sell? And, you know, I was tempted to say no, or I was tempted not to sell because there was this, there was a burn coming up. Apparently they were going to, uh, do a massive token burn for people who didn't claim the when token. And I thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, that's true. I mean, that could happen. But I mean, remember that Bitcoin ETF? That was supposed to be the big catalyst and that was a big nothing burger. I mean, as of course, it'll get better. You know, as soon as Grayscale stops dumping on everybody. Well, it's not really Grayscale, it's FTX and a bunch of other people, but whatever. But I thought about it and I go, you know, what are my rules? What are the rules I'm preaching to everybody every, every day that you're here? It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam. Don't even think on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way, right? So, Rob, if you're going to say these things, you better live up to the game. So, yes, I took profits. That was on January 28th, and I sold half. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll sell. It was free. You might as well sell half. This is on January 28th, I don't know, 7, 8 p.m., somewhere around there, which I didn't hit the top, obviously. No one's ever, it'd be somewhere around here, right? I didn't hit this peak. But I didn't hit down here, and I'm not down here. And that's, I think, it's just a great lesson to, to as for, for everyone to remember. It's unrealized gains until you take those profits. I know there's all these things that people talk about. Well, there's this chart, and there's this TA, and there's this new thing, and then there's this black swan event. And there's the, as time goes on, it doesn't matter. Really, the only thing that matters is what is important to you and what you do for you and your family. And if that has, happens to be take profits or hang on to it. It's up to you. But I just remember that there's a reason why I wrote these rules and these are the rules for myself. But it worked out okay this time. Who knows? Maybe the next time when I sell, it goes up to another 50, 1,000 X. I have no idea. But it's just a cautionary tale that, hey, nobody ever went broke taking profits. I want you to think about that in the comments. And then uh, also, uh, good news for people who got screwed over by Voyager, like myself. Uh, attention creditors, for tax season, Invest Voyager did one thing right and partnered with Coin Ledger, so you can at least take some losses because of their epic trust me, bro, uncollateralized loan failure with three O's capital. And this was an email that I received from Voyager. It says, you know, March 8th, United States Bankruptcy Court. Essentially, the Chapter 11 has been ratified or has gone through. And then to facilitate the reporting of these, these documents that people will need, we have partnered with Coin Ledger. Now, I had David Cameron a couple of days ago. I'm probably going to have him on uh, this week. He is the uh, co-founder of Coin Ledger. I'll have him on again. But right now, what it says to you is that all those losses that actually happened within Voyager, you can take those losses and claim them on your taxes. Now, I will have David back on, and we'll probably get a professional CPA as well. I just want to make everybody aware. And there was one, qu <laughs> was one question here. Coin Ledger goes great. 
let us know if you have any questions. And I said, yeah, I got one question. How does anybody make a $640 million uncollateralized loan based on a piece of paper that essentially says, trust me, bro? I don't know how that happens. But uh, after that, I just never quite understood how Voyager got that point. Anyhow, that concludes that piece. And then also, uh, this is from uh, Marty Party. There's another airdrop. I forgot to talk about this. Is that uh, This one is going to be pretty big, I think. The Jupiter airdrop is happening, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, Jupiter Exchange will be the Binance of, I guess, of, of DEXs. It's pretty damn easy. They're, air, they're airdropping 40% of their supply tomorrow. So if you don't know, I'll just show you what Jupiter looks like. It's jup.ag. Ah, look at that. We're launching our own token on Jupiter's beta LFG launchpad. Check it out. Anyhow, if you've ever used uh, Jupiter, and there's a plethora of different wallets that you can use. I use uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. I use Phantom. I also use Titus, Titus Wallet. And uh, I guess you're going to be getting some free cash tomorrow. Well, free tokens, I should say. So congratulations, to everybody who's actually used that token or excuse me, used that decentralized exchange. And we'll go from there. Now, everybody, let's do some uh, quick Q&A. And then after this, I'd like to introduce you to Myra, which is... The top three, <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking about this. The, the, the top three meme coin on Solana. And everybody knows Bonk, Dog with Hat had its day. And now Myro's, well, was doing okay. And then it dropped 40% in seven days, 16.7% in 24 hours, and one hour down 1.3%. So hopefully, by the time we do my live stream, you can actually get some value out of it. I'm just kidding. But not really. So, what we're going to do is after this, we're going to do the live stream. I'll put a link in the comment section. And let's see, let's see, let's see. And what we'll do is I'll have you. Where did that go? Ah, I'll have you fill out this form over there. So I'll let, you, I'll let everybody know, but it'll be on Dan DGen. We'll go from there. So look, that's it for today for the news part. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it. For